Continuing to hunker down on the news, North Korea said it's pulling out of its two-year relationship with the U.S. even after that historic handshake between Trump and Kim Jong-un. Officials there say they suspect Trump of having left Kim for a younger, mail-order despot with hands a good measure smaller than suckling pigs. On his Can't We All Just Get Along with Murderers tour, Trump again called Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas, which is always a winning move when trying to quell racial tension. Warren's amendment to remove Confederate names from military bases even had the GOP support. The senator embraced Trump's constant mocking, seizing the moment to politically poke him right in the hantis. Lady Antebellum changed their name to Lady A and apologized for any slavery references their moniker may have invoked. Hey, I applaud Lady's A, Lady A's actions, but now I feel a little more guilty about turning my kids on to Joy Division and New Order. Pandemic quandaries. This is a hashtag. Hashtag pandemic quandaries. One, which is bigger? The divide that Trump has created in the country or the one between his ears? Two, if Mitch McConnell fell in the woods and nobody was there to see it, would his chins allow him to garble a call for help that no one could hear before they eventually chokeholded him into an autoerotic-like asphyxiated coma? And Lady G, okay, so who's Lady Marmalade? Contrary to popular belief, Fort Bragg wasn't named for Trump. But maybe someday they'll be Fort Alago, Fort Walls de Mexico, Fort Taxes What Taxes, Donald Fort Jr., Fort Line Sack, Fort Fat Fuck Fart Faced, Fort Not Named for Eric because he's a moron, and Fort Comover. Turns out that the J in Donald J. Trump isn't for John, but actually stands for Jim Crow. Confederate flag ban? NASCAR fans will get go nuts if Mountain Dew gets banned for hyping up the already rowdy crowds, what with its copious amounts of dew. And imagine how mad NASCAR fans will be when the league bans drivers and crew that married their first cousins. Mitch McConnell tweeted today that we have spent years watching elite institutions exchange debate and rigor for uniformity and psychological comfort. Psychological comfort, like from a teddy bear, a binky, or a couple of Russian hookers peeing on Obama's bed? And who is he to be current acting Grim Reaper over anyone seeking psychological comfort? Do we bust his chops for getting psychological and physiological comfort from his yes sir, yes sir, three chins full? Trump said, people are dying from the virus who have never died before. Says the man who dies on every bully pulpit stage, every performance. Hey, two shows nightly. Make sure to tip the wait staff. Bada boom. GOP Congressman Kevin McCarthy said, Nobody should be judged based on the color of their uniform. Okay, how about the fecal content of their nose? Or the butt DNA on their lips? Or maybe the bounteous tails of bullshit in their wheelbarrow? Or the bounteous bales of hay in their wheelbarrow? Both. One of the problems of coming up with a sizable and comprehensive police reform package is that too many police are self-consciously obsessed with the size and form of their own packages. Trump appointee Merrick Corrigan once said that the U.S. was in the clutches of a homo empire, which was a big early 80s hit for either Frankie Goes to Hollywood or The Village People. I can't exactly recall due to all the coke and spandex.